This asset pack comes with an editor utility widget and for it to work properly you need to enable two plugins. The first one is Blueprint Material and Texture Nodes and the second one is Editor Scripting Utilities. Don't restart the editor just yet because you also need to enable mesh distance fields in the project settings. Distance fields are necessary for the GPU particle collisions to work. Now restart the editor. Most of the particle effects are pretty straightforward to use. You can adjust various parameters to achieve the desired look. Colliding GPU particles require mesh distance fields that you can generate in the static mesh editor. Sometimes collisions fail to trigger with thin meshes, so you might have to specify a distance field replacement mesh, which is what I did for this demo room. One of the rain particle systems in this pack uses a ribbon renderer for the ripple effect and the event handler controls the number of segments. To randomize each ripple as a group instead of individual segments, use the acquire tag as the random seed and fixed random seed should be enabled. The trail system can be triggered in sequencer or blueprints for a finer control. The ribbon face system axis controls which direction the ribbon will face and it's actually an enum so you can use values 0, 1 or 2 for x, y or z axis. Niagara tick behavior should be set to force tick last to prevent gaps between the ribbon and the position of the component. The offset affects the position of the flare texture on the screen. You can scale the flare in UV space and it will remain the same size no matter how far from the light source the camera is. Or you can enable fixed world size and specify the size in Unreal units. Now it behaves as if it's in the 3D space. The flare color can be set using the color parameter or a gradient for a more interesting result. Specify the gradient texture and the index of the gradient in that texture. Then you can use the curve editor to create a nice looking gradient. Face light source will rotate the texture with the camera. Fade length is the distance in Unreal units it takes for the flare to fade in and out. Occlusion checking prevents the flare from being visible through opaque objects. Imagine you have a light bulb with a lens flare blueprint placed inside the geometry. If the occlusion checking is enabled, then the flare won't be visible. To fix this, adjust the depth offset value. Custom depth is useful if you want transparent surfaces to block the flare. When multi-sample check is enabled, 8 additional checks will be performed for a more gradual fade effect. Screen edge falloff controls how gradually the flare will fade when the light source moves in and out of the view. Cone masking should be used with spotlights. The blueprint category holds the parameters that are set by the lens flare blueprint. If you're using the blueprint, then you can ignore these parameters. Adjust how the lens flare affects the overall brightness of the scene, though keep in mind that if you have several flares visible at the same time, it might look too intense, so use the view angle falloff and the distance-based adjustments to tame the effect. If you skip to this part of the video and are wondering why the widget is generating errors or it just doesn't look right, then watch the setup part of this video. The purpose of this tool is to let you adjust the color palette of the textures in the editor. It works only with indexed color images. All the textures in this pack are already processed, but if you want to use your own textures, then you need to use GIMP or Photoshop to index colors. It's quite simple to do, just make sure you set the pixel format to RGBA when exporting the images. Left click on the palette color to select it and use the color picker to modify it. You can also click directly on the image to select that particular palette color. Right click the palette color to reset it. This widget also supports flipbooks. 
It will automatically set the dimensions of the flipbook if the texture is properly named. You can select the color you want to modify the same way as before, but keep in mind that it will modify the entire texture and not just the current frame. These adjustment sliders will affect the entire palette. Once done, create a new texture or overwrite the existing.